working with high school students and even college students is that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, aren't too comfortable with mental math. So for uh, the midterm, midterms and final, almost always, I think for all of them, well, well definitely for all of them, there'll be no calculators. And generally, you, don't, you won't, tr I'll uh, encourage you to not use any calculator for the course. Um, I'll try to keep the numbers, like numbers that anybody can do, or numbers that are reasonable to do without a calculator. Um, uh, and I know that's not something uh, most students are comfortable with, so I'm very aware of that. And uh, I'll try to kind of uh, help you guys um, get more comfortable with that. Some people are very comfortable with that, with that but I think most students are uh, unfortunately not uh, super comfortable doing like uh, mental math or uh, even just calculations without a calculator. Okay, uh, any questions on, uh, oh, can we use calculators to check? Um, uh, so no calculators uh, on your uh, exams. Obviously, I'm not there to like watch what your screen is doing or whatever. Um, but uh, I think it's really for your benefit to try to work without a calculator. And in the past, um, on when, when students prepare for the exams, they, a lot of them will get you know, 90 percent, 100 percent without a calculator with no problem. Um, for homework, if you want to check your work with a calculator, that's fine. Um, but she, I think you'll find that. Uh, 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 for most problems, you, you won't need to. Um, and I have a few kind of unconventional things that that I that I teach that take a little bit of getting used to, but um, I, I I think at the end most students that I teach uh, really uh, appreciate. That. Okay. Any other questions about uh, this so far? Um, also, just to mention, um, I think we will have, uh, I'm going to post a diagnostic uh, uh, test today, uh, and I'll show you right now actually how to, so for homework, and I mentioned this in the first homework assignment, uh, let me see here, yeah, so for homework, I'll, I'll just write it here, uh, so the first homework is due next week. I might, um, I'm going to have to, when I get the book, just do as much of it as you can. I might push it back to two weeks. I have to, I think I'm going to push it back to, to two weeks. I'm going to just double check that. So do um, uh, in a week or two. Uh, how many of you are familiar with like um, Genius Scan or any of these PDF scanners? Have you guys ever used that? No? Okay, so for homework, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do, and also for the exams, um, because we're doing everything remote, uh, Genius Scan will be uh, a very useful to tool to use. I think there's some other ones, but just use the Genius Scan, the free version. So it's, I think it's available for both iOS and uh, Android. Uh, so you can write your homework and your exam on a piece of paper and then when you're done you can scan it and it'll scan everything into one PDF and so this will scan your assignments into a PDF um, then uh, it might be hard to upload assignments from your phone but you can email to yourself if you have a you know email to yourself and then upload from the computer and upload file and everything will be uploaded to Google Cl Classroom. And I find that that's pretty nice because I can write on your PDF and I can give you feedback um, right on your PDF. I can leave comments there. So I find that that's a good way to, um, to submit assignments. Uh, if you have never used it before, uh, just, just check it out, download it. Um, after the first homework assignment uh, um, and the diagnostic, I'll, I'll ask you to upload your diagnostic test. Um, 
or actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to ask you to upload the diagnostic test, but you're welcome to upload your work from the diagnostic test. That's not required. Uh, and, um, you know, if you have any issues, just let me know. And I can, um, during office hours, I can help you out. Uh, and I'm also going to do uh, office hours um, every day, or every class. Uh, uh, at uh, 1 30 p.m. Uh, but please let me know if you want to come to office hours. Just shoot me an email so that because I, I won't just turn on my computer if nobody's planning to come. But just send me an email if you want. Um, and if that time, if you have another class or a conflict with that time, uh, just let me know and we can set up another time as well. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so what else should I go over here? Any sort of other, any questions so far? Okay. Um, so let me just do a little bit of uh, my teaching principles. And I will, uh, I'll just post them all over here. I'm going to just share my screen. Uh, hmm. How do I copy and paste? Oh, I'll write them out. So these are my teaching principles. Um, just a show of hands. Uh, how many of you, yeah, and you can, you know, don't be embarrassed or whatever, uh, would consider yourselves to be a math person? And, and hit yes if you do. And hit no if you think I'm definitely not a math person. OK, two to one, two to three. Six, okay, nice, eight to four. Okay, pretty even so far. Oh, wow, okay, almost perfectly even. Nice. Um, so one principle that I uh, really truly believe in uh, is that there is no such thing as not being a math person. And I hear this phrase a lot. Whenever I tell somebody, oh, what do you do? I'm a math professor. They always tell me, oh, I'm, I'm not a math person. I, that was my least favorite subject. A lot of people tell me that. And I'm uh, always kind of uh, saddened to hear that because uh, um, I think that's a big misconception, especially somebody, uh, you know, I, I I have always liked math, uh, you know, throughout school, and I, I was a math major in college, and I went to graduate school for math. Um, but I think the, the, the main distinction that people make is uh, I'm not as good, I'm not as, as good as other people are at math. And when you start sort of looking at math as like, I need to be better than someone else, or I need to be the best in my class, uh, you really start to um, miss the point of why math is special and why math is actually not just for people who are geniuses and like can uh, you know understand really complicated equations. Um, math is a uh, you know a language, an art, almost like a game that anybody can enjoy, right? Anybody can play chess and have fun without being a chess master. Uh, so that's kind of my attitude that I hope that you guys will get uh, through this course is that. Um, uh, I really want you to appreciate and whatever you learn, just learn it really well. Don't worry if other students are picking up faster or slower. Um, it's math is really about kind of growth uh, for yourself. Um, and like coming from me, uh, uh, I you know have advanced uh, studies in math, and no matter how much or how advanced you are in math, um, there's always going to be you know, my classmates in grad school, some of them were like way ahead of me. And so I sometimes it's, it's easy to fall in that trap to compare yourself to people. But I always remind myself like this is something that uh, that I really enjoy. And these are some ideas that I like to investigate. Um, even if people pick it up faster than me, uh, or have a stronger background in something, that doesn't mean I can't enjoy it, right? Or at least try to. Um, and uh, I know that sometimes people who say, oh, I'm not a math person, they, uh, you know, they'll see some equations and feel like they're stuck. Uh, have you guys ever looked at any, like, math equations or any problems and just been like, 
had no idea what to do whatsoever. It just looks like a foreign language. So um, uh, the thing, the, the truth about math is that a lot of people try to avoid that feeling because it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Um, but, but the truth is, uh, is that unfortunately you can never get away from that feeling. Like uh, when I try to do work uh, uh, and, and learn some new math or go to even like math talks at UCSD uh, when there's like a visiting lecture, a lot of the time, like I'll just be sitting there and have no idea what's going on. So that feeling of like just being totally lost, sadly, you know, you don't experience that much when you're in a history class or English class, but in math, that's just a part of the game. Uh, so don't be discouraged if you feel that way. I, I found that the, um, the thing that uh, was hardest for me to, uh, to do was um, I always felt shy to ask like my college professor or graduate school professor, hey, uh, I was totally lost. I have no idea what you're doing because I, I felt like embarrassed that, you know, why can't I keep up with the class? Well, I'm, I'm not putting in the effort, so I'm not even gonna bother. It's not worthwhile for me to ask for help. So um, uh, I really wanna encourage you that uh, never feel shy to ask for help or embarrassed, even if, no matter how far behind you are, like even if you failed, completely failed the test, um, uh, just always feel comfortable to ask me. Because I've been in that position where I failed classes and had no idea what's going on. And uh, that's one kind of piece of advice that I would tell you is, you know, the professor usually wants to see that you care about learning. They don't care that you, uh, well, they care that you're struggling, but they don't care that uh, you're not able to keep up uh, 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 as well as other students. They care that you want to try to keep up. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that brings me to number two. I think I, I talked about number two and three there a little bit. Um, so just be, uh, um, you know, recognize, that students have different learning styles learning styles and background. Um, I think especially like uh, um, in an intro college class, uh, you know, uh, we all have, uh, all of you have different kind of, had different teachers, had, had uh, different approaches to math growing up. So, um, uh, you know, I want this to be a really comfortable space for everyone to ask questions. There's, I always tell my students this, you'll kind of um, get tired of me saying this, but there's really uh, no such thing as a stupid question. Um, and I'll often say, you know, I'm really happy when people make uh, mistakes, like really good mistakes. I'll, I'll often say that was a great mistake. So when you try, try to solve a problem and you make a mistake, um, I think that's actually really, really awesome. And that's really the best way to know that. Um, uh, yeah, always feel free to reach out to me. Um, so number three is I try to be very approachable. Always feel free to reach out to me during the, the uh, class or in office hours or by email. So um, I'm always happy to talk with students, especially if they want to um, you know, show that they're interested in getting better at math. Okay. Uh, Number four, and this is kind of a, uh, I, I think I probably should mention, yeah, mix this with number eight that I have here. But number four is uh, do not ever uh, underestimate estimate uh, the value of um, elementary skills. And I'm putting them uh, in uh, quotations because like they are skills that maybe you learned in middle school or elementary school, like stuff with fractions, decimals. Uh, and you know, it, might, it might seem kind of funny like, oh yeah, this stuff we all learned for so long ago. Uh, but believe it or not, like even teaching uh, high school students or even talking with some of my um, you know, some people who are my age who uh, 
have been out of math for a while, um, these skills, uh, it, it's, it's uh, very important to have a, a strong foundation in some of these elementary skills. Um, and, and also to, um, like, uh, to, to understand them very, very well. And, and that's something that we'll focus the beginning of the course on. Uh, so things like fractions, Uh, uh, just a thumbs up. How many of you, uh, okay, thumbs up if you like fractions, thumbs, uh, hit, hit a, sorry, yes if you like fractions, no if you don't like fractions. Okay, okay, good. Oh, wow, that, that's, that's the fastest one that went up so far. Uh, that's usually my response to that question. A lot of people hate fractions. Uh, and I hope after this course, like I also uh, find fractions sometimes annoying. But uh, hopefully, after the first few weeks, you'll start to feel more comfortable with fractions and not be like thrown off by them or anything. They won't, you won't be intimidated by them. Uh, so fractions. Uh, how about another one? So that, thank you guys for responding to that one. What about percents? Give me a thumbs up if you like percents, and give me a no if you're a little shaky on percents or not super comfortable. Awesome. Okay. Uh, looks like a little more people are uncomfortable than comfortable. And percents uh, are, you know, extremely important, not just for kind of moving further in math and going to uh, you know, pre-calc and calculus, but it's just important if you ever want to do a business, pay taxes, um, uh, do anything business related. Uh, it's extremely important to understand percents, I think, for uh, just literacy in everyday life. Uh, and then, um, and other things we'll work on uh, later are algebra, definitely kind of some algebra techniques and exponents. And believe it or not, all of these things are very, very uh, related. And hopefully, uh, uh, you guys will build a strong skills. Um, and this is kind of uh, related to number four. I never just want you to accept something that I tell you. And I think in general, it's a good philosophy to have. It might make you kind of annoying with people that are trying to teach you or your friends if you always question them. But um, always ask like, why is this true? Never just believe something that somebody tells you without really kind of justifying that it actually works. Uh, I find that a lot of the uh, time students are taught math in a way where it's like, um, uh, let me ask you guys this, and you can respond to me in the chat or somebody could hit the space bar. Uh, uh, how would you do something like this? Uh, two divided by four thirds. Let me just uh, go ahead and cut this here. So always uh, ask. So this is just an example here. So what do you do here? If you want to simplify this thing, uh, what do you do? Nice. Uh, uh, freeze and flip, right? So you freeze the numerator, and you flip, and you multiply. So this is equal to 2, 2 times uh, uh, 3 fourths. So this is uh, freeze. Please and okay. Um, give me a yes if you have uh, seen that before and you're comfortable with that. Or if that you know that's and I know if if you're a little a little bit shaky. Cool. A lot of people. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Some people have have not. Good. Uh, we'll we'll practice with with we'll we'll get some practice with those techniques. And if you have the textbook. Uh, and let me know if you have trouble getting the textbook, but um, uh, uh, if you're not comfortable with this, uh, freeze and flip, um, uh, in the textbook, in the uh, review sections, uh, they kind of start from, uh, the review sections are really good in the textbook. Uh, and you can kind of go at your own pace. Uh, so let me know if um, you feel like some of the stuff that we jump into is a little bit uh, uh, advanced. And um, I can kind of guide you towards uh, 
uh, some things in the review sections that should help. Um, but but um, hopefully for all of you, the review section um, will be a good chance to kind of uh, brush up on uh, things that you learned before. Uh, okay, so yeah, we freeze and flip and we make this, uh, we can simplify and we're left with uh, three halves. Um, now, can anyone give me a, uh, uh, so this is a very systematic way of doing it. You don't even need to know, have a feeling for what the quantities are. Can anyone give me a, another way of ex explaining why this is true or like uh, justifying freeze and flip a little bit, or at least in this case, just to have some intuition. Nice, yes, it, it's two times three fourths. But, and this is kind of like a weird question, but can you, rather than just kind of thinking about fractions, like, okay, you gotta do, if you see a fraction like this, you gotta flip it over and do this. But what does it mean? Like, you know, if you see 10 divided by two, that means how many times does two go into 10? Oh, that's five. But how, how should we interpret two over four thirds? What's a, what's like a visual way we can see it? and convince ourselves that it should be three halves. Uh, very, very good. So it's the actually the other way. It would be how many times does four thirds go into two? And some of the reason for freeze and flip is it's kind of hard to think about, like we know how many times uh, two goes into 10 because nice, because two is a whole number and 10 is a whole number, so we can actually count. But when you start dealing with fractions, um, it's a little bit weird to say like, how many times does four thirds go into two? Uh, it's a little bit hard to visualize. So one thing you can think about, this is just one approach. Uh, you can say, well, you know what? Four thirds, it's kind of like, I can think of a third as an apple. So four thirds is really like four, four times one third. And if I write everything in terms of thirds, so uh, write everything in terms of thirds. And, and by the way, here's, you know, you can draw it with a picture. Here's two. These are two units. And four thirds is, you know, if you divide everything into three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. So uh, how many times does this quantity go into the bigger quantity? Well, it looks like it's one and a half times bigger. So that's, that's how you can think of it that way. Or alternatively, you can think of two as, two is the same as uh, six thirds. We know that we can always multiply by three over three. Everyone would agree that six thirds is the same as just the number two. And that's really nice because that allows us to uh, remove the four here. And now this is times uh, one third. So uh, what's really happening here is what's, we're doing two times three times one third all over uh, four times one third. So if you write everything in terms of thirds, then you see that the two is made up of six one thirds and the, the four thirds is made up of four one thirds. So then you have six over four, which does simplify as three times. So um, uh, that's one way you can kind of justify a freeze, freeze and flip because the numerator stays in the, the numerator of the thing you're dividing by stays in the denominator uh, and the denominator of the thing you're dividing by, you use it to uh, rewrite the numerator and it'll become, uh, the num it'll, it'll be moved up to, the, to, this, to this thing over. All right. Any questions on uh, kind of that idea? And just to just to kind of uh, uh, do another one, similar one. What? How would you interpret two divided by uh, one fifth? Can you guys actually visualize the the, the pieces? Give me a yes if you actually visualize one fifth going into two, into the number two, and not just freeze flip.
and let me know if you're having any trouble with it. So some, some people are, are, are not. Okay, so here's how you can think of it. How many times does one fifth go into two? So here's the number two. Let's just write two blocks, right? And one fifth is a small little piece right here. How many of the small squares, and there's, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five total. How many of the small squares fit into the whole thing? Into the into the two in, into the two blocks. So this is one fifth. This is uh, and this is two blocks. So in total, how many little squares fit in, into the two rectangles? Nice. Yeah, ten. So there's ten little pieces. And of course, you can do this with the freeze flip way: two times five over one, which is ten. But I just want you to have, uh, as we learn, I really want you to have this sort of intuition about um, uh, how fractions work and, and these sort of things. Because uh, you can learn all the methods of how to like manipulate stuff, but if you don't have a good understanding or intuition for it, then it's, it's, uh, it can be very dangerous when you, uh, it can be harder to grasp uh, concepts in the future. Okay. Um, uh, and kind of tied to number six, Sorry, number uh, five is number six, which is uh, think deeply of simple things. Um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, this is something I learned when I was um, in high school from a, a, a program I went to where we, they told us that um, that really uh, some of the most interesting things in math come from some of the things that we learned very, very early in our education. Like uh, you guys know about prime numbers, right? So there's some like really incredible things that are still mysterious about prime numbers. In fact, prime numbers are the most mysterious things in math, but at the same time, they're extremely simple. Like you can, anyone, you can explain a prime number to somebody in middle school or elementary school. It's just a number that doesn't have any other um, factors except one in itself. But here's some really like mysterious things about prime numbers. Um, uh, every, it's called um, Goldbach's conjecture. Have any of you ever heard of this problem? Okay, so here's the problem. Um, every even number can be written as the sum of two, well, I should write, I should just write the number two, as a sum of two uh, prime numbers. Um, so, so let's try it out. Um, so anyone want to, uh, I'll give you a, a, an even number and see if you can find the two odd number, the, sorry, the two prime numbers that add up to it. So how about 10? Nice, seven and three. Any other, uh, any other ones? You can also do five and five. Um, how about uh, 16? Seven and nine, uh, that one would be, nine is not prime. Nice, awesome, well done. Ronnie, excellent. Awesome. Ty, awesome. Oh, Shay, cool, I didn't think of that one. So there's a few, five plus 11, or uh, also 13 plus three. 
So we're not saying that there's uh, exactly one way or two ways, but at least one way. Uh, let's just do a higher one, uh, just to show you uh, that it still works. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, how about 24? Oh, one, a uh, good question. Uh, somebody wrote uh, 23 plus one. Uh, one is not considered prime, by the way. This is a useful factor to know. Uh, one is not prime um, because it, it doesn't have another kind of factor except itself. It just has one, but it doesn't have, one is uh, not prime because it has an inverse. It's just uh, one times one. Uh, but yeah, there's a few, 19, there's, there's a bunch. 19 plus five, uh, and then also, uh, uh, 13 plus 11. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't think of that one. 17 plus 7. Awesome. Well done, guys. Uh, yeah, Hannah and Ty, yeah, you guys thought of the same one. Very good. Um, so, uh, and by the way, you guys can, uh, welcome to chat uh, uh, to, to the room as well. But privately is fine too. Okay, so believe it or not, it's unknown whether this is always true. People have checked this with computers up to like a few billion, but nobody, you know, that's not a proof, right? You can't always just keep checking forever. That's, you're never gonna be able to get through all numbers, but still they don't know if this problem is true. And it's a really, really simple problem to, to, to state. Um, and it just shows you, uh, this is one of my favorite problems. This problem was stated by the ancient Greeks, uh, like Pythagoras, Euclid, maybe, maybe over like 4,000 years ago. And we still don't know the answer to it if it's true. Um, uh, and here's something uh, to, else to think about. Um, this is kind of all, another, another thing that's uh, uh, related to think deeply of simple things. Um, uh, how would you guys explain, or what is the answer to this? How do you simplify nine, or not say nine, sorry. Uh, and you might not have seen this or remember this, what is four? What is four to the zero? Nice. How many people think that it's one? How many people think that it's zero? So let me. I'm just gonna clear clear it real quick. Hit yes if you think it's one, and hit no if you think it's zero. Okay. Cool. A lot of people think it's one, and you guys are all correct. And some people think it's uh, zero, because um, it could mean a you know, four to the one is just four to the first power, which is the four. Four squared is four times four. But why four to the zero? Maybe you just have nothing there. Uh, can any of you, uh, or any of you, willing to kind of uh, speak up and justify why should four to the zero be equal to one? Is it just a rule, or is there some, is there some explanation for it? Anyone have a good reason? All right, or I'm curious actually what, why you think it's equal to one. How I've uh, been thinking how it's equal to one is I know to the power you're kind of just doing four times four times four times four. And if you do four times nothing, technically there's still the one left over because you're never multiplying by zero. Nice, exactly. Thank you, Mason. Um, so that's a good way to think of it. And I've seen, uh, there's some popular math teacher on YouTube who, who does this little little table that I think is really helpful. And it's exactly what, what Mason uh, suggested. So if you do four uh, to the one, um, four squared, if you just look at what the pattern is, four to the third, uh, this is four, 16. Anyone know what four to the third is? I think it's 52. Close. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you, this is kind of going to be the mental math stuff, and I'll, I'll point this out uh, later. Uh, so 16 times 4. Don't, I, I don't want you guys to do math like this too much. This is, um, uh, this is not bad, but I want you to just kind of start thinking a little bit differently about mental math. Uh, 16 times 4. Let's just break it up as uh, 40 or 10 times 4 plus six times four. You always go from the left. 
So we get 40 plus 24, which is just going to be 64. Nice. Um, so this is 64. But the idea is as you increase the power, you're increasing the, the factors of 4. So what's the pattern as you're going by this? You're always multiplying by 4. But if you were to go backwards on this table, if you go backwards on the table, instead of multiplying, what are you really doing? If you go backwards on the table, go up the table rather than go down, what would you say? How do we get from 16 to 4, for example? Oh, yeah, we're dividing. No, uh, it is a square root, but uh, and we'll learn more about square root later. But this is just dividing. So the pattern is if you're going, you're, you're undoing the operation of multiplying by 4 by just dividing by 4. So therefore, this is kind of cool, and we're going to spend the whole chapter on these ideas. Um, uh, when you go back this way, when you divide 4 by 4, what number do you get? So what should be, this is, if it follows the pattern, this should be uh, 4 to the 0, and this will just be the number 1. And if you go back even one step further, what would the exponent be? Like, what's the pattern? 0, 1, 2, 3. What should be right before 0, then? What, what exponent should I have here? What should it be? 4 to the minus 1. Nice. Because it's the power, it's the ex, it's, if it just follows the pattern, it's like I divided by 4 rather than multiplied by 4. And if I divide 1 by 4, I'm left with 1 fourth. So it gives you a, a hopefully a, a slightly different sense of just rather than just memorizing some rules, you're thinking about exponents as uh, adding factors of 4 or dividing by factors of 4. And so when you're not either adding uh, when, you, when, you're, when you're not multiplying by a factor of 4 or dividing by a factor of 4, you're just multiplying by 1. You're not changing the actual quantity. And we'll talk more about how exponents are all about uh, multiplicative growth. Okay. Um, just a quick, sur like quick survey. Uh, how many of you uh, hit yes and hit no uh, uh, had seen that idea before about 4 to the 0? OK. And don't be shy if you hadn't, because sometimes a lot of people haven't seen that idea. Cool. OK, I'm glad, I'm glad a lot of you have, have seen that before. Um, OK, so uh, number six is uh, we're going to focus on ideas, ideas versus formulas. Uh, this is a popular one. How many of you have seen the quadratic formula? Sweet, a lot of you. Uh, how many of you know uh, why it's true, where it comes from? I'm going to clear, clear that and hit. OK, bunch of no's, a few yeses. Cool. So uh, one of the things we'll learn later in the course is uh, not just like how to use the quadratic formula, which is a great formula to have and to memorize, but also where it comes from, what it means, um, and how to derive it. Um, I think that's a very, very valuable thing to know. You can always forget a formula, but an idea that you truly understand is something that I hope will stay with you for the rest of your life. Uh, okay. And then uh, number seven is um, be the driver and don't use Google Maps. Uh, how many of you, uh, first of all, how many of you have a driver's license and are driving one? Nice. Nice. You guys, uh, I think I got mine about the same, like 11th, uh, end of 11th grade, I got my permit. Cool. How many of you are in driver's ed? Anyone in driver's ed? Um, how many of you, when uh, the uh, those of you who are new drivers, um, 
how many of you like to use Google Maps when you drive to a location you haven't uh, uh, been to before? Oh, I have a few people who don't like Google Maps. Those of you who don't like Google Maps, you want to message me what, or speak up what what, uh, uh, what you use instead, or if you just kind of know the directions really well. Um, okay. Oh, Waze, nice. Waze is good. The, yeah, if, if you know directions really good, that's that's actually the best. Nice, Amy. Your dad is uh, very smart. <laughs> Um, okay, those of you who do use Google Maps, and I, I use Google Maps a lot, you know, we have to go to you know, different uh, markets or whatever, and I still kind of get confused once in a while. Um, for those of you who use Google Maps to navigate to different places, especially places that you've repeatedly gone to, um, how would you feel if you had to go to that location somewhere, you know, in, in a very, like, um, dense area with lots of different streets and, and exits and off-ramps. How would you feel if you had to go to that location without any Google Maps? And just message me in the chat or you're welcome to speak up. Uncomfortable. Like, uh, I live in Sierra Mesa, and I know sometimes I have to drive to, like, uh, some parts of, like, North Park or El Cajon Boulevard, like, the 8 and stuff. Yeah, you feel lost, right? But we don't feel lost with Google Maps. Google Maps tells us where to go, turn right, turn left. You feel really secure because you know, even if you make a wrong turn, you'll get to where you need to go and it'll, 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 it'll correct you. And, uh, and, and I think if you really focus on that idea, I, I have this as well. If you, if you just take away Google Maps, I'll get a lot of anxiety. I just don't know where to go exactly. I kind of vaguely know, but I just, I, I'm pretty sure I'll get lost and then I feel uh, pretty bad. Um, so it's the same thing with math. And when you study math, have this approach that, yes, I'm maybe learning some of the ideas. Maybe I'll look at the solutions and kind of follow through the step by step and until it makes sense to me. Um, but one trap that I've fallen into and a lot of students fall into is we learn math kind of using a Google Maps mindset. Uh, but we never kind of push ourselves to remove Google Maps and just do it do a problem from scratch on a piece of paper without any notes or any tools. Um, so I think it's helpful definitely to be shown uh, how to use Google Maps and like how to get to your location. But the, the, the thing that you should really focus on is not driving through the, through the route, t somebody telling you to turn left here, turn right here, and it'll get you there. But before you get there, Kind of have an overview and an overall overall strategy of like, okay, I'm going to turn uh, right onto um, uh, Balboa Avenue and then um, get on the uh, 805, and then that'll take me into downtown, and I got to get on this freeway. So just have an overview of the general plan um, when you approach a math problem, not just like, okay, I need to move this to this side, subtract this, this like step by step guide. Have a overall, I, I find that's really helpful to kind of have a strategy. Um, and also when you're studying, try not to fall into the trap of using too many, too much Google Maps, as in uh, just like you forgot how to do a problem, you're not even going to spend the time to try to remember, you're immediately going to go to your notes. That time that you spend to try to figure it out on your own and even go down the wrong road, that's actually, believe it or not, how we learn things. We don't learn by just driving through Google Maps, we learn by saying, whoa, I shouldn't have gone, I shouldn't have taken this exit because this exit doesn't let me go this way. You know, uh, that's really the best way to learn is to learn what you can't do. Uh, to, and then you'll, you'll remember, oh, hey, I should avoid doing this because, uh, uh, and then you'll remember the right way to do it. Uh, it's a little bit philosophical, but I hope uh, that the, the analogy sticks with you. Uh, okay, um, uh, number eight is um, don't let the calculator have all the fun. I used to have a teacher in high school who said this, um, and I strongly agree with her. Um, and I will share with you guys right now uh, an app, and I posted this. And students have all different levels of ability with this skill. Um, 
um, mental math really helps uh, uh, with kind of mathematical fluency when you're solving equations. You guys know uh, in English, when you first start reading, you might sort of be putting uh, the sounds of words together. Like if you see a um, uh, photograph, you might like kind of just sort of say it out loud. And then eventually, as you guys might have seen this sort of like a, a viral Facebook post or like meme, where they like take photograph and that will just remove a bunch of the letters, but you still know exactly what it is. You, your mind can kind of fill in the blanks. And once you get comfortable with reading, it almost becomes second nature. You don't need to sound out the letters anymore. You just see it, you just see it and you recognize it. And it allows you to get the concept of the actual story, not focus on the step-by-step uh, -step, um, uh, uh, little details. Uh, and with math, that's the way that we're taught, unfor unfortunately, doesn't really push that too much. Uh, um, like uh, when we do algebra, we, we still sort of are taught to move things to the other side, write everything carefully. And, you, and what ends up happening is when ideas get more complicated and you have all these little steps, it just becomes so easy to get confused because you're writing like a whole page of calculations, but you're not, you're not seeing the, the overall big picture because you're just trying to follow all these little steps. And each little step, if you're not super comfortable, is its own problem. So it's kind of hard to, to focus on the whole thing. Um, so I think that's why I really emphasize um, mental math and something that almost no math teacher probably has ever told you. I actually will push you to sometimes not write things down when you do algebra. Um, and you'll see what I mean later. Uh, again, if you, if you feel, if it makes you comfortable and that's how you like to do it, uh, I don't want to make you um, uh, uh, too out of your comfort zone, um, but it is something that I, I that it is the way that, that uh, has helped me to actually, when, when problems get more complicated, um, especially like word problems, if I just focus on uh, how to rearrange the equation uh, by like, writing every little detail, it'll become hard for me to focus on the actual content of the problem. Um, so let me just quickly show you guys uh, an app that I posted a link to this app on the classroom. Um, uh, this is uh, called Mental Math Cards. Uh, I think there's similar apps on, uh, there are similar apps on, uh, uh, oh, there's my little memoji. Um, there are similar apps on, uh, Android as well. I don't know if they have the same exact one. Uh, but uh, uh, let's just try um, addition, uh, maybe medium level. Try, like, uh, I've had students who have never really done these types of things. So just, it's really important to try all the operations first, like at the easy level. Um, so you can practice like at the easy level, five times two, 10, no problem. Uh, eight times nine, 72, no issue. Um, uh, but probably more interesting is to do a little bit on the uh, medium level. So let's just do one together. You guys can message me when you get this. So uh, without a calculator, just in your head. Uh, I'll go through the first, how I think about the first few. 93 times seven. So the key with all these, I'm not gonna teach you any like advanced mental math tricks. The only one that I really think is important is to always go from the left. So we are usually taught to go from the right. So like you, most people will do three times seven, 21, and then carry over the two and then multiply nine times seven and add it, right? Uh, we don't wanna do that. Instead, think of these as going from the left. So focus on the biggest part of 93. 93, the biggest part is 90. So 90 times seven is um, 630, because it's nine, the same as nine times three, uh, sorry, nine times seven. So it's just gonna be 663, but you put a zero because it's 90. And then you add in the, the, the little remaining part, which is 21. So it'll be 651. Any questions how I got that without writing it down? Give me a no if you weren't comfortable with exactly how I, how I did that one, because I, unfortunately I can't write here. Okay, I'm just gonna go, go to the notes really quickly and just kind of go through that one. So it was 93 times seven. So instead we focus this on, instead of 93, I think of it as two parts, 90 plus three times seven. And that allows me to break it up into things that I can hold in my head. 
it's very, very difficult to do it's very difficult to do this normal way of doing it. This is like so hard to do in your head because you gotta you gotta carry things over. Okay, this one this one is actually not too bad, but you gotta carry things over and move it over. Um, later you'll see that this is like a very difficult way to do it. This is not good for mental math. But this way is nice. Um, you can break this up as 90 times 7 plus uh, 3 times 7. 90 times 7 is a nice number. That's just 630 because it's just 63 with a 0. 630. And this is just 21. And then hopefully you'll feel comfortable with 630 plus 21. Let's try another one. And again, uh, if, if you're not comfortable with these, um, just to share a story with you, um, my brother, when he was a college graduate, he wanted to uh, uh, take the uh, test similar to the SAT called the GMAT. Um, and uh, one thing, I work with students on test prep, and um, uh, one thing I noticed was he, he was really uh, slowing down when he kind of would solve some questions and every calculation he would go to the calculator. So I got him to use this app and um, when he did the time challenges, like in, on the medium level in multiplication, he like doubled the number of questions he can do in a minute after about just like three, four weeks of practicing. It just takes some practice. It's a skill and you can practice it. So I, if you don't feel comfortable, uh, I think you'll see awesome progress if you just uh, download this app and push yourself to do, do like two or three minutes a day and just every day do it a little bit and have fun with it too. You can. I don't want you to compete with your friends too much because it's not about like necessarily um, who's better, but it, it can be fun to see, you know, a little competition is fun once in a while, but it's, that's not what it's about. It's, it's really just uh, competing with yourself, trying to get your time better. So let's just try one more. Um, any questions on, on what I did here with uh, 93 times seven? Okay, let's just do one more here. Uh, where is it? Let's do, Let's do one with, uh, 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 yeah, let's just do practice. So yeah, this is a practice and then you can do a time challenge. All right, 32 times six, go for it. Same, same idea. Nice, tight, thank you. Sweet, awesome. Message me if you're, also you can message me privately if you're stuck. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, and then I'll just show you with addition. Let's just do one with addition or subtraction. Um, let's do medium. Uh, let's do practice. So again, don't go from the right. Carrying is not good for mental, mental math. Just go from the left. So I would just do 50 plus 60, which is, so focus on, uh, I can't write here, but focus on um, the, the things on the left. So that's 50 plus 60 is 110, and add another 10, and you get 120. This one, if you guys are okay, and things like that. So maybe like, uh, nice. Um, and then 28 plus 14, again, just focus on what's on the left. So you have 30, uh, and then add the, and then you keep, you know, so you have 30 on the one side, and you have 12 on the other. So 30 plus 12 is uh, 42. And then hopefully you can get to this level. Um, <laughs> then it's doable. Like this is as, I, I'm not that good at this, by the way. Uh, if you guys have ever seen any competitions of like uh, genius kids or, you know, talents, like they have all these competitions where kids can do like six, seven digit things in their head. And there's strategies where you can do it really quickly without a calculator. Uh, but again, the main thing is just to keep track of things on the left. So um, 400, there's actually a little uh, a sneaky way to do this one. Uh, nice, well done, guys. So, the sneaky way to do it. Does, that, does anyone want to volunteer a slightly sneaky way to do it? Anybody? Um, I don't know if this is the way that you're thinking, but. First, I would add the five and the four. Okay. And then I would add 400 and 800. 
Okay, the, nice. The 90s and the 90s. I like that. That's, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Um, there's something sneaky you can do here. And this is like one of the tricks that you don't really need to know, but it's, it's helpful to keep in the back of your mind. When things are like in the 90s and stuff, maybe round up and then take away later. Like 495 is really close to 500. And 894 is really close to uh, uh, is really close to 900. So you can you can try that approach as well. Nice, yeah. Round up and then subtract. So, um, but I I my general go to is exactly like Amy your your strategy. Just add up the big pieces that I see. If the ones don't carry over, because if they carry over, I'm not I'm not trying that. But um, if the ones that carry over, I'll just definitely add them up. Um, and then in the 90s. Uh, uh, but that's really good. Uh, and yeah, so awesome. So yeah, so we got 1400 minus uh, 11 because we have a five and a six. So those are, we got to take away 11, and then you got to think, okay, 1400 minus 11, that's going to be 1389. Great. Okay. So this is something uh, that uh, is challenging. I'm not even that good at it. Um, I think some of you are probably better than I am at this. But uh, if you can at least get up to the medium level. And you can do like time challenges every day. It's just two minutes. Don't do the hard level uh, unless you really want to push yourself. Just do the time level, uh, a medium for each one, and try to get, you know, try to see your improvement. I think this is a really good thing. This is actually one of the things like percents that will help you not only in my class, but uh, like, sadly, <laughs> you know, most people never need to use the quadratic formula ever, like at, outside of a math class. But doing something like this can actually help you in real life. So uh, out of things that are important to learn, I would say this is, uh, this is up there with, if not, with, with the most important things, if not the most important. Um, OK. Uh, and then let's go back to my notes. Uh, OK. Uh, number nine is to just be, um, be honest with yourself. Uh, Again, I don't mind if you don't understand something or are really behind or got totally lost or for some reason had other things come up. Um, uh, it, you know, I really don't want you guys to be dishonest on exams. Um, and the other thing is be honest, but be on most important is be honest with yourself. Uh, I have not followed number nine many times. Like I've been in math courses and uh, uh, told myself kind of like the Google Maps trap like oh I know how to do this. I'm following I'm I'm following what the teacher's doing I don't need to practice on my own I don't really need to like start with a blank sheet of paper and just see if I can do it it all makes sense this is pretty easy stuff and then I get to the test and I bomb it because I didn't actually try to do it on my own uh, so that's uh, I think that's the hardest thing to do is to be honest with yourself I still struggle with it uh, anybody who tries to learn something always struggles with it so just keep that in mind um, and the last one is uh, uh, as a general feeling for the class, um, uh, you know, I'm like your. Uh, you guys know, like when you go to Everest, you need to you need to have a Sherpa, like your mountain guide to help you climb up the mountain. The Sherpa doesn't like carry you on their back. They maybe give you some supplies, tell you which route to take, but you got to do the climbing yourself. So uh, uh, I'm like the Sherpa on a Math Mountain. And I never wanted to feel that like I'm your adversary, like trying to like keep you from passing through or something. Uh, I'm your guide to try to get you up the mountain. And we're actually all in it together. We're like an expedition. Um, some people might be better climbers than others, but that doesn't mean we're not going to help somebody who's struggling. Um, and I, when we go into breakout rooms to solve problems, please have that mentality. Please be aware that other students might not be as strong as you. Um, and I think there's nothing. It's really awesome. And it really actually helps you as well uh, to explain your ideas to somebody else. And don't be embarrassed to ask somebody. I know it's really hard to not be embarrassed. And I, just, I suffer from that as well. Like if I see somebody's really good, I'm shy to ask them like, hey, I need some help. Can you help me? How, how did you do this? Um, uh, but try your best to, to get over that um, and always feel like you can ask me for help. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. And I'm trying to get you guys to, the, to all to get to get to. I, I wrote here in my notes. I'm trying to get you to the top, but Mount Mountain is so big. I'm also climbing it myself, and I think it just goes on forever. Um, 
Uh, so maybe we'll say we're trying to get you to the to the base camp of Mount 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 uh, Math Mountain. Uh, okay, so that's that's the end of my long spiel. Um, uh, I think I'll probably end it there for today. Uh, uh, I I didn't have a chance to do the. I don't. I think ten minutes might be a little short for the uh, um, end of class activity, but I will will. Let me think. Yeah, I think. Uh, sorry, ten minutes is a little short for the uh, uh, activity I wanted to do, but we can do it a little bit tomorrow. Maybe we'll just do a few problems that uh, I'll share with you guys. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, the homework is going to be in the textbook, so the review sections um, uh, will be in the textbook. Uh, if you don't have the textbook yet or you have trouble getting it, let me know. Um, uh, I think I'll probably make it due uh, in two weeks because I think it's a lot of problems. Uh, and again, the homework, you're, you're, you're given, um, oh, you can get the textbook from uh, uh, the library. Uh, if you can, I think the librarian will be in school tomorrow. Are you guys allowed to access? There is no uh, online version of the textbook. Let me see, I, if I can find it, I, I will, um, uh, I don't know if we have, we don't have access, you might be able to like, just like find the bootleg PDF, um, but uh, uh, there is no like official uh, version that we have. And I, I personally like, uh, online material is very good, but I think it's nice to, yeah, so, so uh, uh, you can pick up the textbook tomorrow. Let me just confirm the exact times. Ah, okay, so good questions. So let me just go on my Gmail here and look at the, I got an email when the library will be open. Oh, and we're going to do a in-class diagnostic test. No, uh, the textbook is available at Claremont High School. Um, okay, so there's two textbook days. So textbook stays. Um, there will be September 1st and September 3rd, and um, this is at Claremont Library. And it will be uh, um, from 10 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. And uh, the textbook is, um, I think it's like something, um, Introduction to Algebra. And the author is Bittinger. But, but uh, uh, Ms. Manning will know uh, which one it is for Math 96. It's like a big blue red book. Um, and uh, let's see here. Um, let me show, let's close this. Uh, um, okay. I'm going to put this to. Um, so I just posted a few things. I'm going to just sh uh, share the screen. Um, so tomorrow, uh, what I'd like to go over, uh, let me just uh, stop the share here. Uh, share screen. 
this step two. Sure. So I just posted some resources here under homework assignments, uh, under classwork. So here's the class stream. You guys are always welcome to um, uh, kind of communicate here and ask questions and, and respond to each other on the Google class stream. Uh, if you want, uh, you guys can make your own like Discord group to chat with each other because I think that's a nice way to, to or Slack or something to, maybe I'll make a Slack so we can um, have a, a channel for chatting. Uh, like, but because Google Classroom is a little bit hard to get notifications, but but all the content um, will be here, um, uh, and this is where it's easiest for me to respond to stuff. So um, I posted here some the mental math app, some class info about the Zoom. Uh, this is uh, I'll talk about this in another class. Um, just out of curiosity, how many of you? I don't even know what's going on with this, but are any of you planning to take the SAT? Is it is it even offered this year? Uh, can, can any of you tell tell me like uh, just through uh, any of you will, um, uh, who could volunteer to tell me like how they're doing it? Uh, <laughs> keep they keep canceling it. Like I've signed up three times waivers, and each time they've had to cancel it. Oh really? Okay. So it's it's gonna, I see. It's gonna be like in mat, like you have to wear a mask or something in person. Well, yeah. Um, uh, eventually, at some point, you might have to take it, uh, um, especially if you're still a junior. I assume that things will probably get better in a year or so. Um, but if you're a senior, um, maybe a lot of schools are also dropping that requirement. But regardless, if you want to go to grad school, um, uh, you're going to need to take the GRE uh, or business school. So um, I'll share, here's, these are some really good resources. Uh, this is a really nice blog uh, that I use with my students for, to prepare for SAT. And this is just like, uh, you know, you wouldn't go into a, a normal test without studying what's going to be on it. So if you're going to take the SAT, you have to read these, these these six chapters. They just literally tell you what kind of questions are going to be on there. Um, uh, and I think it's in general, uh, we'll, we'll go through some of these questions. I think they're just good types of questions to learn about. So um, that's some things that you can go through. Um, and then uh, I'm going to change this assignment to be due the, the following week, because uh, I think it's a lot of questions. Yeah, it's a bunch of questions. But um, uh, uh, yeah, here I ask you just to do every other odd question. I don't know the page numbers of, of R1, R2, R3, R4, but it's just the review sections in the back. And then for tomorrow, um, this will be like a really good uh, diagnostic. Uh, uh, and then we're going to have a diagnostic in-class quiz on uh, Thursday. But try for tomorrow to see if you can do this um, uh, diagnostic uh, test. Uh, if you don't know some things, Start looking in the reviews. If you have the textbook, start looking in the review sections. Maybe uh, uh, Google online, or it's okay if you just uh, are stuck with some things. Just make a note of the things that you're stuck on. And uh, if you are not familiar with Genius Scan, um, and you want to also kind of ask me some questions about your work, uh, I really encourage you. This will not be graded, but uh, I encourage you to turn the assignment in, so I can see who turns in the assignment. Um, so you can just turn it in, and I'll take a look, and I'll give you some feedback uh, on your work. So try to get this done by tomorrow. This will be like a little assignment for tonight. Uh, and then in class tomorrow, we will go over some of these concepts, like about um, uh, exponents and uh, a little bit of algebra, some algebra with fractions, some decimal stuff, set builder, a little word problem, um, equation of line stuff. These are all prerequisites. And... Um, uh, uh, it's okay if you're not comfortable with all of them, but if you feel like you, you don't know how to do any of this, um, it might be hard for you to keep up with the class because um, we will move a little bit uh, beyond this. Uh, uh, but I can still still work with you, and uh, it's still possible to always to, to catch up. But um, I just want to be aware of any students who you know uh, might need some more uh, background before moving forward. Uh, and also, the other thing with this class is um, uh, 
uh, if you feel like you won't be able to keep up with it or you don't have the foundation um, after we do the diagnostic and maybe the first midterm, you do have the option to um, uh, first drop the course without a W. I think that's, I'll, I'll figure out when that deadline is, but then also later on before like in the second or third month, you can drop with a W, which is not ideal. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's not ideal because you're in high school, but honestly in college, um, uh, if you're actually at Mesa, uh, just to know that if you get a W in a class and then you retake it the following semester, that W is just wiped away. So in, when you're actually uh, at a college, many times uh, you can withdraw and then um, retake the course and, and get it and replace the W. Uh, but it, well, we do try to avoid that in in the um, in high school, just because it does show you won't have a chance really to retake it and re replace it. So um, and it's going to be on your transcript or something. So uh, I really try in the, within the first three weeks or so to figure out if there's any students who who won't really have a chance of um, who, you know who are a little bit behind and, and 